La entrevista que están a punto de ver a continuación no es para cualquiera. La tuve que grabar en inglés porque Dan Doherty solamente habla inglés. Y para los que no lo saben, Dan Doherty es considerado el padre del movimiento maker. Así que está muy interesante esta charla que pude tener con él. Un poco corta y un poco larga para el lugar en el que estábamos. Pero creo que vale mucho la pena. Esta persona es creadora de la revista Make y un año después empezó con todo este movimiento Maker y las Maker Fair. Entonces pongan mucha atención, les voy a poner subtítulos porque esto está sumamente valioso. Met you like many years ago. Actually, my dad is the one that introduced me to the Maker world. You know, he he's a he's a dentist. So he taught me how to build and fix things. He uses his hands. Yeah, he uses his hands a lot. Yes. And he's a maker. Right. The right. Dude. And he also learned from his mother to, to make jewelry. So I'm into making jewelry too. Great. And when I, I, I knew you and, and well, people say, I don't know if, how you feel about that, that you're the, the father of the maker movement. I think that's a big, huge deal, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I like to think it was birthed by a lot of people working together, you know? Yeah. But, but, but I want to know, well, my, my dad, I think that his goal was to teach us how yeah. to be independent. Yes. So he make us uh, maker sons. But how did you start it to, with this? How team? did I start it? Yeah. Hmm. Well, you know... Um, I mean, you, you I'm not a face. really good maker. Like, I don't, I don't, well, I don't I, think that every you know, maker is a really right, good maker. Right, 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 right. And I, I do like to write, and I okay. like to. Uh, I, I, so one of my goals initially was I saw this subject as a subject for a magazine. Okay. Right, and that the people were fascinating. They had stories, but they did something, and it wasn't really covered well. Um, not just like they did it, but how they did it would matter uh -huh. to me, and I wanted to enable other people. So that's kind of like the DIY side of stuff. I like to make cheese now and then, not because I'm going to be a cheese maker yeah. and sell it, but yeah. because I'd like to know how it's made no, and, the process. And, and be involved in the process. And I like to cook and do things like that because I like to do it myself and, and know that. And so I figured out that technology is not that different than cooking. Yeah. There's a process behind it. And can we teach that process? Not, not in the formal way of teaching, But just yeah. show it, right? If 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 you had something you wanted me to learn, you'd show me how to do it. Yeah. And I I would pick that up and I'd say, was this you know, have a question or two and try it myself. And that's essentially what I was saw an opportunity that technology was just becoming something we buy, not okay. something we use to create something. And it can be a tool, not just yeah. product. Yeah. And so that kind of led me down this path. I'm thinking about uh, finding people, whether they were building robots or kites or yeah. you know, ceramics or things, how did they do these things? And how can we share that with other people so that more people decide yeah. to call themselves makers or no. firecracks, yeah. fireworks. So it came out of that. And, and I had, originally I was doing some work on a book series that was hacks and I liked the idea of hacking. Okay. And when I came up with the idea of the magazine, And my first thought was, well, I'll call it Hacks Magazine. But when I ran up by my kids, they didn't understand that very well. And I thought it yeah. was kind of narrowing in the computer sense, like it means sort of geeky things. Yeah. Whereas make, I came up with that word, it's just a broad, we all make, right? Yeah. And that's yeah, kind of wanted to this. convey that, right? It doesn't matter. It's not necessarily asking whether you know 3D printing. It's more asking a personal question. What do you make? Yeah. Right? Yeah. What's your passion? Yeah. You know? And, and, yeah. um, When people get together and can share what they make, it's really a great thing. And that's kind of what led me to Maker yeah. Fair was just all these people are meeting through the magazine. What if we brought them together, just like down here at the festival, yeah. you know, and you get to see what people are doing and you get to know them in a way that you yeah. probably don't, even if they're your neighbor, you don't know them. Yeah. Or because, even other work. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's completely yeah. different. Because, um, and it's very personal. Yeah. And it's very important. Yeah. So. You know, that the same way is like, how do we encourage more people to do this and to value it? And this is probably another level of it that I discovered getting in is I'm not sure in our cultures that we value making enough. And yeah. we look in the past even and we go, wow, what the, that work was done by people with their hands and things. And do we really appreciate that? Yeah, right. No. And do we 
you know, we just go to the, the store and buy stuff off the shelf, right? But someone produced that, yeah. right? And I think the, particularly in education today, is kind of not, like you're not going to buy your education. Yeah. You're not going to consume education. You yeah. got to do it. You got to, you know, you got to produce education exactly. for yourself, yeah. right? Yeah. And so that's, that's kind of all the sort of ideas sort of came together. Um, and I just realized this is a big idea, something I wanted to share with lots of people. And the okay. best way, really, I thought to share it was not to write long papers about it, but to show it, exactly. right? Bring pe those people together and let them talk about what they do. And that yeah. would reach all kinds of different people. Perfect. I want to go back a little bit because you mentioned hacking. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure that you have a different view of, of the meaning of hacking. What yeah. is hacking for you? Well, you know, I just sort of mean is getting things to work the way you want it to. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, you know, it has an alternate meaning, which is sort of um, breaking into something. Yeah. But I, I, it has a parallel meaning, at least, which is like was starting to get used in the early part of this century. You know, like uh, I want to hack my finances, which means I want to figure exactly. them out for myself. Yeah. Right. And I really like that idea. Like, and so... Early on, one of the books I had, do you remember TiVo machines? They were yeah. like rec DVRs or rec yeah. digital recorders. Well, the, some of the, the geeks figured out that they were uh, Linux boxes, you know, exactly. and they had hard drives. And so rather than buy a hard drive to expand your capacity, you just break into it exactly. and you would hack the TiVo. Yeah. So we wrote a book at O'Reilly on yeah. hacking TiVo. And, and it was kind of the first, oh, this applies to consumers in a weird way. You know, every, um, things break. Things need to be fixed. Um, things that want to be upgraded. You do Or that yourself. In a different and the, way. Early, the interesting thing: the yeah. early computer users had that mentality. Yeah, because they more likely built their computer, or they upgraded it. Yeah, to like put in a crunch. new card. Right. Yeah. And and but now it's just a laptop that's kind of yeah. sealed off. And and you're like you your can, phone is a perfect example exactly. of it. You don't go you can, inside your phone. You can change it to, to, yeah. to fix something. Yeah, I love the, the the view you have about hacking. When I when I I have uh, um, chips on my hands. Yes. And when I started to study about uh, biohacking, I learned that hacking is not well for the breaking into things. Yeah. But to make things more useful to you and improve them. Yeah. So I I really love that definition and and you yeah. made it clear. But, Listen, I wanted to hear it from you a little bit. I loved your, <laughs> you know, your father telling you, don't be bored. Yeah. You know, and I always thought it was a kid. I was a little bit sick as a kid and had a lot of time alone. And I don't know how I got to it, but like you choose to be bored, right? Yes. And, you know, and I was, there was a part in my life where I felt like I'm going to choose not to be bored. Yeah. Right. And, and there are other things, whether it's reading, you know, or, building I like, used to build like little models of stuff as yeah. a kid you know and I enjoyed that right and I wanted to do more of that and, yeah. and so you know when I kind of got into making and stuff I was looking at ideas around play and I thought in many ways the magazine was about encouraging adults to play again right yeah. to, to enjoy the things they enjoyed as kids yeah. and it was just like why are you doing that I don't know I'm just playing I'm, exactly. right? you know? yeah. it's like Are you doing this to make a living or, uh, you know, change the world? No, I'm just playing, you know. Exactly. And so I'm taking it apart. I'm putting it back together. These things happen, you know. And, and I think it ties to that same spirit your father's trying to get, you know. It, on one hand, it's to be useful. I get it. But you, you don't always do that directly. You do that indirectly sometimes yeah. by playing and figuring things out. And it was one of the intuitions I had around make, seeing, like, why are these people building robots? You know, why are they doing these things over here. Well, they were just playing with them to That's figure right. out what those things could do and what yeah. they could make it do. That's yeah. the hacking and part. And right? And say, yeah, well. they were experiments. And, and they go like, oh, I can make it do what yeah. I want it to. And the manufacturer you know, had its own clear ideas of what it was, but they were limited. And the makers kind of expanded that. Yeah, exactly. and said, I can do this, I can do that. And they just went down a path following yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. the, the, it's a great insight you have in your no, your, well, your, your, my dad channel. teaches us how to fix things in the house because right. we, we have the tools. But he also teaches us, um, like when you have nothing to do, when you have your car fixed, your house in a pretty way, you you, you don't have nothing to do. And when you don't have nothing to do, you have you start doing what you love, yes, or what you're passionate about. So you make art, you build 
I don't know, airplanes or stuff like right. that. You have a hobby, but maybe that hobby can lead you to another yeah. thing. So my dad built something in our heads about turning the hobby into also fixing the house. Like we, I have three brothers and we fight each other so we can cut the grass, you know? <laughs> my father made all those <laughs> things really fun. Yeah. Well, that's another thing I should have talked about earlier when I was talking about education is, you know, making a lot of times does come from our parents. Yeah. And and it's a great thing. Not every parent today yeah. does yeah. that. And I, I kind of realized that in doing Make It Fair, that we were teaching parents how to tinker as well as the kids, yeah, right? Know. And if we could get them both working together, that'd be great. Yeah. But it, it really matters to have that contact. I, I run into so many makers slash engineers. Like I ask them, how did you become it? Well, my dad, my mom, you know, yeah. that's the answer that comes out of their mouth. And it's not a great answer if you want everybody yeah. to become makers. But I think we have maker spaces and fab labs helping in some ways to uh, um, address that as an issue. But I, I would say for those of us that are parents and adults, it's really, you know, kids learn from seeing you do things, yeah. right? Yeah. It, and, and I always went, well, I was real conscious of this when I was, you know, when my kids were really young, is they look at dad and he's sitting at a computer typing away. That's what dad does to them. Exactly. Nothing in my head. It's just like I type. Right? Yeah. And I kept thinking like some of these cheese making other things. Well, whether they would participate or not, they see me do things and they know I can do things. I yeah. learned to do things, whether it's cooking dinner or other things. And a lot of life is figuring out how to do things. And, and um, so uh, your, your dad had a, a, a really uh, good way maybe of understanding how to motivate you to do yeah. that. I think I think that the 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 answer to all of this is the the secret of of teaching is uh, teaching in a way that the person that is learning is not aware until it's Absolutely. too late. Absolutely. So know? yeah, yeah, and that's the and secret. you know I think it's one of the things that education doesn't get is like you don't the kid doesn't need to know they are learning. Yeah, yeah, right. This is kind of what you're saying. Yeah, that, that's the problem but, with it. But it's like school. when they're they're doing and playing. It's kind of like, well, how do we know they're learning unless they could say this and that? And it's like, I don't care. Yeah. You know, they're no, working, they're do doing it. stuff, yeah. right? Yeah. And they'll learn, they'll learn, you know? Yeah. But it's kind of like the, the, I always say it's practice before theory, you okay. know, because, but we, we, you know, it's like, how do you learn music? Do we yeah, sit down and go like music notation looks like this? Here's this formal system and it's amazing. It's incredible. No, but we say, have to copy. like, look, yeah. here's an instrument, pick up a guitar. You yeah. know, try to play it, and you you, you, you won't be very good at it initially. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And and then that stuff, that theory, may really help you. You know, if you want to, you know, expand yeah. your your horizons. Exactly. But it's not how you get started. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And as a last question, how did you went from from the um, magazine to the fair? Fair. Well, that was it. Was like a year later. And a year later, after yeah, the, the yeah, the magazine. Was, we did and the magazine two thousand five, and then the okay. first fair was two thousand six. Okay, and you know the answer is, I was so uh, <laughs> interested in the people, the makers I was meeting, and I, I just thought they they had great stories. They were interesting. You know, if you if you looked them in the eye, yeah, they wanted to show that, what they were it's, doing. It's you know you got to know who they were and. They got, you learn something from them. I said, you can't do that easily. You can't even do that on media, I think. You know, you don't have that same presence. And so I thought, what if we brought makers together, kind of like a science fair, an art fair. Yeah. They show their work and talk to people about it. And you get to ask them questions. And we don't get to ask questions of a TV show, right? Yeah. You know, and, and like, where'd you get that piece? Or how did you come up with this idea? And, and I thought that really especially even relates to kids who want to know how did they get there, not just what they did. And so I, I didn't know if it would be successful. We just tried it. Yeah. And um, a lot of people came out who didn't say, I'm, I don't know if I'm a maker. I said, I don't care. Yeah. Just bring your stuff, show up. And, and, uh, um, and, uh, and I think people really Good enjoy job. it, you know? And, and so we, we, you know, repeated it and, and we kind of <laughs> spread it out. And, <laughs> yeah. And it goes out there. But, you know, the, the thing that kind of struck me was that makers are everywhere and particularly in your own community. So, but they're not always easy to find. Like no one says, 
I'm you know, amazing. I do this, yeah. right? Or they show you their stuff. Yeah. And so I, I really wanted um, this to be a community event where you got to know what your neighbors made and yeah. they could help you in different ways. And, and I think it's, it's not only that they do cool stuff, but behind that are real world skills um, that they probably do use in their day jobs and other things. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it is really a worldview or a mindset that we're trying to spread because yeah. um, more people can get engaged in solving their own problems. I think they can, you know, move the world in a good exactly. place, right? In a different way. Yeah. Perfect, Dale. Nice Thank meeting you. you. Nice meeting Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Listo, ready. <laughs> Pero creo que vale mucho la pena. Esta persona 